Hey everybody, we hope you're enjoying the midget build so far. Unfortunately, things aren't going to plan, Martin. Not quite, but I reckon it's going to be okay. Now, before we kick off this episode, we want to show you a couple of the mad things that we've got on the Mighty Car Mod Shop. We do all of our own merch that's packed and sent from right here. There's lots of different stuff there, probably things that you didn't even know that we sold, but we thought we'd pick a couple of our favourite things. And number one, I'm just going with the black on black chopped flex fit hat. I'm wearing one right now. Marty's wearing one right now. I am. This is one of my favourite and, items. And they've got one for people with fat heads. So I've got a triple XL one because I've got a big noggin and that fits really, really well. You can also get like lots of different sizes. So for anyone with a big head, there you go. One of my favourites is the stainless steel insulated drink bottle. Water's important. Get water into your body. It looks really cool. It's got um like a... I don't know, laser etched thing. Looks really, really cool. One Double insulated steel. And for favorites. those driving, uh, I don't drink coffee, but this is excellent with your kombucha in it, Martin. I don't drink kombucha, I think it's garbage. Sorry to the kombucha <laughs> drinkers out there. Uh, but this is a travel mug, and I hear from people that drink coffees, because I don't drink the dirt water, uh, that this is absolutely excellent. And um, it's a car-related mad thing for car-related people that like coffee. Now, recently at Bathurst, there was a race on and I saw someone had a chopped flag and it reminded me of how awesome these look, particularly in your garage or on your shed or in your bedroom or wherever, wherever it is. Chop flag, people. That's Just awesome. the cool thing to stick up. I reckon it looks mad. It's got the eyelets there so you can mount it on things. One of uh, my favourites. We do lots of lanyards, lots of keychains. This one here is the Mighty Car Mods black on black wrist strap. Premium. The whole thing is black. That is excellent. Uh, put some of your fancy keys on that. They're excellent. I got one more. What do you got, Martin? I've got also the original red chop tag. It just stands out. I like it when your keys are in a bag or something. You grab the tag, you pull them out. Awesome. Do you know what I use those for? All my motorbikes. So motorbikes have got red chop tags and cars I use the other ones. Backpacks, zippers. Uh, we had the um, Tokyo hoodies. So these are the Tokyo grey hoodies here. Um, they're an awesome design. They've got this on the back of them as well. Actually, I should show you. I should be semi-professional. But these ones here, completely sold out. Gone. Forever. Uh, and we've just had a whole new batch in. Uh, they're awesome. And the design on them is just... It's just kick-ass. They're really great. Nice They've got quality, lots of really too. functional pockets. Really soft, not really nice. Not too thick, so not a really hot hoodie um, either. These are available again right now, so if you want to grab these before they go, now's the time. And also, Mighty Car Mods cable ties. Can't go past them because they're holding so many of the different cars together. Mighty Car Mods on the actual cable tie there. Just a really handy thing to have. It's a uh, pack of 50, 4.8 mil by 250 mil. And if you don't know what merch that you want to get but you do want to support the show, thank you very much. What you can get, of course, Cheryl's big box. Now, I can't show you what's inside that, but what I can tell you is that you'll get like, um, like I think it's a couple of hundred dollars worth of stuff at a discounted rate. We'll pack it for you. Uh, so you just go call I want a box and we will cram it full of epic stuff. Way more stuff than you would actually get for the same amount of value. So it's so basically special our mystery surprises crate. in there as well and it's, uh, it's often changing too. So yeah. And you unique get. stuff in there that you can't get anywhere else. Um, so actually I'm not even going to say so this special stuff. So this stuff made for people who are into cars by people who are into cars. So we come up with pretty much all this and yep. design. We've got some, some awesome mates to help us design the stuff and make it. So really proud of that. Hope you enjoy it also. Uh, that should be listed below the video or you can click the link. Alright people, now it's time to jump back into the midget build. Of course Last time you saw it, uh, it didn't work. Absolutely boned. Today, we're going to try and make it work, and you're coming with us. We hope you enjoy this epic episode of Mighty Car Mods. After days and days of trying to get this thing working, we applied power to the starter motor, and it wouldn't turn over. Which means either this engine's broken, or somewhere in our weird Daihatsu recipe, we've stuffed it up. We now have less than a day to get the car finished and to the dyno, and less than two days before it needs to be working up in Queensland, a thousand kilometres away, with a professional film crew. Okay, so, looks like we might have to mix and match midget and Sior flywheels to get it to work, but if the midget flywheel doesn't fit this engine and this flywheel doesn't fit that gearbox, we're cooked. Like, completely cooked. That's so, the end, isn't it, Martin? That's the end. So. We're going to try the midget stuff and a mix and match hybrid between both. Otherwise, it could be stuff which you sometimes have to do like clearancing within the box or whatever, but we've got to keep them together. So this is the one off the front wheel drive car, which fits perfectly. The reason I kept it was the clutch fits perfectly into the box and the height looks correct. There's a possibility the midget one won't have the height, therefore won't fit the box with this particular engine. So that's what we've got to work out now. The stock midget clutch is noticeably smaller than the one that came with the one litre engine. It makes sense as the power output is considerably higher, that you'd want more surface area and more clamping force. But at this stage, any working clutch combination is going to get us over the line. So we'll have to mix and match until we can get it to work. 
So in advance, I spoke to the guys at Extreme Clutch and said, we're doing this weird Daihatsu thing. I'm pretty sure you're not going to have a listing for a midget, but you might have something that works with a Daihatsu and you might have something heavy duty. So if we're lucky, there's a chance that this kit that they've sent might actually fit. And it's mostly about the cover. And the cover is the same as our midget and the height's the same. We might be in luck. And in which case we've actually got a heavy duty upgrade. That's actually looking good. We might be okay. And if this fits and doesn't foul, we've actually got gone from having a, a locked up engine that won't work because of a clutch to a heavy duty clutch, which is excellent. It's worth remembering that as far as we know, this little rear wheel drive K-Truck gearbox was never intended to be mated to this EJDE one litre engine. We're hoping to have an upgraded clutch in there as the original one might slip, which is no good for doing skids. So all we can do now is try each combination of clutch disc and pressure plate Test and retest until hopefully it works. Uh, so we might be cooked. I was looking at this before, and if you look at this flywheel, it's got this massive cutout on the back of it, and I wasn't sure what that was for. Turns out it's for the sump. It's to clear the sump. And if you look in here, it's a bit hard to see, that flywheel midget with this engine doesn't clear it. So I don't really know why, because it's the same sump that was on the other engine, so why does it not now fit, but it must be something with the relationship of where the crank sits and where the casing sits versus where the sump sits. So I think we're actually, we are going to have to use this clutch and just try and make it fit. It definitely uh, sits on the gearbox properly, but it's clashing somewhere as well. So yeah, a bit of angle grinder and then that's our last hope. If that doesn't work, we're actually cooked, but that's the last thing I'm going to try. So it might be a late night. All right, so with the box off, we can have a closer look. It actually is, looks like it, it isn't fouling. With the box on there, I couldn't really tell, but it turns. So there's a hair of difference, uh, a hair of clearance really in there. Just a ball hair, Martin. A bald hair? Yes. Not such thing, that's an oxymoron. Yeah, I know, that's, that's how small it is. It's a, a bald, bald hair. hair. Got it. Yeah. Like a rabbit with no fur, <laughs> except it's a ball sack. <laughs> try and crank it and make sure it actually cranks now. So, cross your fingers, people. Well, it does crank. It cranks. It sounds weird. It sounds like it's... Underwater? There's no water in it. No, but it sounds like it's gurgling. I agree, it sounds strange. Well, the water pump would have been doing all sorts of funny things then. Yeah. With any water that was left in it. Um, yeah. Oh, unless we, unless when we had it tilted over, we got a shit ton of oil somewhere we shouldn't have. That's, yeah, it's trying to pump out or something. But we would see oil come out. Is that bat that battery's okay, isn't it? The big is boy. That yeah. It's ginormous, man. <laughs> yes. I'll go again. Yep. Yeah. Really labouring to turn though, isn't it? Now it seems like we might have two problems. One is that the clutch might be fouling on something and preventing the engine from turning properly, or the starter motor just isn't up to the task. Or maybe both. We have no idea. All right, last shot for an easy fix. We're going to throw this shim in. It's from the other engine. It probably won't work, but in case it does, we're just going to whack that in and see if it just gets us that clearance off the starter, because it looks like the starter is binding with the ring gear. Off comes the flywheel, again, in goes the spacer behind it, and this could give us the clearance with the starter motor, which seems to be the cause of all our dramas. Then we notice that the starter motor housings have some slight differences, and we're currently trying to crank a big block with a starter meant for a midget. So if we can put the big block guts into the midget housing, we might just be able to make it work. All right, Davo. Literally the last shot that we have at this working at all. Because if this doesn't work, we're actually cooked. Oh, no. So this is the original L251 starter, jimmied into a midget starter housing. I don't even lost track. We've been doing it for 12 hours, so I've lost track. Well. Three, two, one, come on. 
Oh, dude! Yeah. Yes! Yes! So good. Well done. That sounds like a starter now. It sounds like it actually wants to start. That shit can go in the bin. You know what? You can... I swear to shit. Don't sack you. Absolute... Straight in the bin. Oh, missed. Three times in a row. Boom. Last night, uh, we had a pretty rough time, actually. We thought that our engine was completely flogged. Yeah. We tried out a whole lot of different things, swapping clutches and flywheels. It turned out that it was the starter motor combined with jumper cables, which was just not doing what they had to do. But luckily we've come in today and the motor is not lying on its side covered in oil. Everything's perfect. You notice yesterday there's a little bit of weepage around the uh, tubes where the bit. spark plug... Yeah, well, a little bit, Martin! Well, where the spark plug tubes go, because the engines, normally the, the rocker cover's on the top, but because we're 70 degrees over, there's a lot more oil happening over here. And, and that's a lot in, more. That's in a this. A lot more. So this is the rocker cover. So I just whipped it off, and, and these seals here, were you could see daylight. It looked kind of like that. So there was a seal in there, and you could see daylight through it. On the other side of that, hello, I'm engine oil, and I want to be outside. I want to be free. I want to be free. Let me free. And it did let itself free all over our floor. So had to get these. Do you think you can get this part? No, you can't. You can get them from Japan. We're not going back to Japan again. No. Because we have no time. And the dyno is imminent. The dyno is in the things on the ground still. <laughs> it's right here. And the dyno is imminent. So, um, but thanks to the uh, wizardry that is online nerdery and some people on a, uh, the Live to Die Hatsu club thing, I said, I need these. Where can I get them? Are they really called that? Live to Die Hatsu? I think it's called like Live to Die like that. Oh, wow. Live to Die Hatsu. Oh, God. It's okay. pretty, pretty cool. Shout out, no, to, but you. Thank Shout you. out to you, dude. Shout because out. That's awesome. Why? Because I didn't just get three people, I got four. Now, why do I get four? What has four cylinders and is, is awesome and front-wheel drive? What's the first thing that comes to your head? A Golf GTI. JDM. I'm not saying Honda Civic. Don't well, try dude, and make me say it. It's a from a Honda Civic. So, a Honda Civic actually saved our ass because this part is common with a Honda Civic. So, there's a part number, which I'll put in the description for anyone playing along at home for the three people out there playing this game. Um, there's actually a Honda part that fits, so that has completely saved our ass. That's surprising. I thought maybe a Toyota part. Same. Not a Honda part. Same. And that's what I was looking for. Is there something the same? They're 40mm outside demo and 25 inside, but they are essential without these oil everywhere. And without this, we also couldn't put the engine in. So now, even though we're very much behind schedule, these are going to go in, gasket's going to go in, we're going to put the engine back in really quick, and then Dave is going to come along, give us a hand to actually get it running. God, I hope it works. We have no idea whether no it's going to run or not. No idea. There's not many components of this I'm thing that... We started with such high hopes, uh, and there's not many components now that have like gone smooth sailing. I still you know have I mean? hopes, but, but there's so many things that could go so very badly wrong yep. at any point. And that clutch locking up, the engine locking up, was one of them. Yep. Now I think we've solved that. The starter motor, that wrecked it. Couldn't get a replacement starter. That's fixed. Except, Mun, we're now using the midget clutch with the big block, and it's possible that that's just going to create a dust show. Oh, that we're just going to completely blow it to pieces. So, all these things we don't know, but what we now have is oil staying inside the engine. So, this back together quickly, gasket back in on the engine, Dave will finish the wiring, engine will go in, we'll plug everything in, plug the Haltech in, put a base map on it, get plum fuel, plum water, plum, get an air filter, air temps. Let's go. My Honda Civic spark plug tube seals fit perfectly and the engine no longer cries tears of oil as we try to rehome it into this midget. The rocker cover can now go on for the last time and the engine can be lifted back into place. Dave, oh, my work here is done. It's bolted in. There's no cooling system yet because we want to make sure it's actually going to start before we fill it full of water and so it can fill its cylinders full of water. It's not going to happen. Um, but it's mounted, so now it's just wiring time. What else have you got to do? I'm going to plug everything in and then all I need to do is put the battery on and we've got to find the ignition switch so when we turn the key on, we can find which one has power. Is that like here, one uh, of something? Yeah, look, something out of here Yeah. will have that um, key barrel power. So once we have that, we'll connect it to the pink wire on the Haltech loom and then we'll start it. Load lap laptop and I've tunes. Put and a I've put a map in it, I've done it, oh, we're, dude, we're ready to go. All right, um, great, Yeah. <laughs> let's do it. Okay. Last thing before we try and start this thing is this. Bang, just like that. Bit of side pipe action. That's what's happening just to get it done and started. I've decided to go with a side pipe partly because it's quick and easy to fabricate and partly because it would sound ridiculous. I'm hoping, kind of like Mod Max, with five missing cylinders. Dude, that is unreal. <laughs> Are we ready? Is it time? Yeah, I think it is. 
I think it is no coolant, but that's okay because we want to make sure that there's no compression leaking into our cooling system. So it's time to start it. We'll find Dave and we'll hit the key. After what has been a huge day, Dave assures us it's about to start. <laughs> Are we going to try and crank it? Yes, we'll try and crank it. I don't right. know what's going to happen. No, me neither. Nothing could happen. I just hope Everything it sounds better happen. than it sounded last night, yeah. which was... Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> we'll see what it does, I guess. We have zero RPM. So it's not sensing crank, crank cam, whatever stuff? Okay. But that's, that starter sounds healthy, which is great. That, actually it, that actually that sounds, sounds pretty good. Really good. It sounds like a little three-cylinder. You can, you can hear its spirit. Hear it chugging. Yeah. See what it reads on the scope. Not reading. Zero. Oh, you know what's great about the only good thing about that problem? Is that's a Dave problem. <laughs> I've seen an hour, mate. Wait, who did the wiring? I didn't do the wiring. Oh, you didn't do the wiring. Okay, I don't worry about it. Is that worse? All right, you, yeah. you, you fiddled some sessions. It's the next day and you've done some settings. Let's you go. know what, Dave? The problem with you supervising me doing the wiring is now neither of us know if it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll see how it goes. Yeah, that's a no. Where's it supposed to say RPM? Yeah. yeah. All right, so what's not happening is this, which is the crank angle sensor, is not getting its signal as this thing turns around, it's actually magnetic. You can see it's trying to stick. As this turns around, it should be going beep, 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 beep. And because of this cutout, it knows where top dead center is and it knows the relationship of everything, so you can do full sequential. Because we have one external to the car, we can actually plug it in and, uh, and go on the scope within the software, within the Haltech, and just see if uh, anything's up, because it could be the sensors stuffed in our engine or it could be a wiring issue. We're getting there, people. It's going to happen. We're going to test it with some of this. Uh, the spares we got from the engine in Japan, and we can actually use this as a spare if it turns out our one's cooked, but I think it's going to be okay. But we're <laughs> very much running out of time now. I don't even know what time it is. Dave's laptop reckons it's nearly midnight, and we have been at this for hours. Um, something weird happened where there was fuel going through an open port while we're trying to get our triggering to work, and it sprayed fuel, then it leaked out the exhaust, made a huge puddle. Then there was too much fuel pressure, so we dialed the fuel pressure back with the gauge, but then the gauge didn't work properly. Anyway, it's been, been a mess, but... Mm, fingers crossed, right now, we've got RPM, so really the Haltech should do its job and the thing hopefully will actually fire, but we can't run it for very long, so. Let's see, Davo. Um, do it, man. All right, we'll give it a try. So <laughs> oh, damn. Okay. 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 Right. We got fuel, but I don't think we have spark. So that's the next thing we have to solve, making sure that those coils are getting powered because we're splicing in midget loom with random loom for part of the engine but not the rest of the engine. We think maybe there's an issue there. So we can just easily test. If they've got power, then we're actually screwed. So hopefully they don't. We'll see. Just do it, Dave. Sure. Just do it. Come on. Come on, midget. <laughs> that is our result. That's our result. How's that timing? How's that timing? Not great. That's ignition timing, isn't it? Um, do you reckon? Could be the edge. It could be pinned back to front, like the crank sensor, because I've been testing so many oh, things. Oh, right, okay. And if it's back to front, it just won't work? Uh, it'll work, just not well, kind of like that. Try again, here we go. <clears throat> Come on, midget. Come on, midget. Yeah! Sounds terrible! Turn it off! That's does good sound, noise. It does sound different, but it ran. <laughs> One thing at a time. <laughs> It's just, it's there. It's there. Through that hole. It's spluttered and done some weird stuff, but we reckon we've got it nailed now. So fingers crossed, it's just gonna run. It's gonna build oil pressure, it's gonna sound like a car. 
We doing it, Dave? Mm. I'm gonna lose my shit if this works. Come on.